Hey there, YouTube land. Big Dave here, and uh, we're on the uh, fishing and outdoors channel. Uh, and we're having our coffee. It's very important, coffee. Now I can make the video. See, it's better. I'm still looking for a coffee sponsor. If you follow my other channel at all, I don't know if you're a musician, but if you follow my other channel, I've been looking for a coffee sponsor for a really long time. Just in case, you never know, right? But this is what we're drinking today. Starbucks Cafe Verona Dark Roast. It's awesome. So, I'm still looking for a coffee sponsor. We'll see what happens. Anyway, so uh, I thought I would take just a couple minutes today because I'm starting to use a new field camera. Not for videos, it's for my still stuff. And um, I got into the... Uh, well, I've been using Nikon since the 1980s, so this is nothing new. But I have the new uh, Nikon D7-8, which is a uh, full frame. I think it's 24 or 26 megapixels and um, has a very fast processor. And it also has um, fantastic 4K video. But I don't really do much with video, but I might mess around with it in the field and see. I'm not really interested in using that um, to video like myself or anything, but I might use it to video some uh, like wildlife kind of stuff. Anyway, so I'll just quickly before I lose the page, I'll just show you some stuff I did in, uh, in low light here. This is... Um, this is pretty awesome because uh, the detail is incredible on this. And this was with a 300 millimeter Nikkor that I've had for a long time. Um, but this was in like almost no light. So these big mushroom funguses, whatever we got going on here. And um, that thing was about 10,000 ISO. So I don't have any other camera that can operate in like 10,000 ISO. Um, and this sunset, this was really, uh, I was very impressed with this. And um, it's a little hard to see on the screen here, but um, let's see if I can get this to reduce. No, it doesn't want to do it because uh, you know what it is? It's because of the video. If I upload these, see, that's a little bit better if I don't push it to, right into the screen. Um, but what happens here is, like if I, this whole section here is just so clear where normally it would be all blurry and blown out with reflection. And then down here, even where the sun is, um, if you saw the original, there's no like halos around. Um, it's just clean. It's perfectly clean. And I really don't have another camera that'll do that. Um, whether it's because they have a filter on the sensor, um, uh, the anti-aliasing uh, filter or whatever on the sensor, or is it because the uh, lenses are in such a way that they create this, between that and the sensor, they create this glare. This has no glare. There's no anything. Um, like I said, it's a little hard to see it here because of the way it's, the sunset is taken, but it's perfectly clean. There's no like anything, uh, no kind of extra halos or um, extra, you know, scientific um, phenomenons coming in from all over the place. That's a good photographic word, scientific phenomenons. <laughs> That's what we got with digital. We got scientific phenomenons, but I, I like digital. It's fun. So I'm going to talk really quick about this. So this is a really heavy canvas knapsack. And it's a no-name brand. I have about two inches of high-density padding in the bottom. And um, this is how I carry my stuff if I go out. Um, it has a big tie in the top. And the advantage of this tie, like if you pull it this way, is that you can close this up and then put the flap down. So if all of a sudden it starts to rain or something, you got your stuff closed in here. Um, with some bags, either the zippers leak or they have um, things that stick off 
like out of the outsides. So even if you put the flap down, there's still stuff uh, on the outside. And some have a tent, but I just find that to be such a pain in the neck to deal with a tent on a camera bag while you're out. Now you gotta play with this thing, especially if it's windy. I, I've had, I have it on two of my bags, my older bags. And it just doesn't, uh, it doesn't desire, like it's not desirable for me. So um, anyway, this is uh, what I carry in there. I have this now as my field camera, Nikon D780. I think it came out in about February. And um, I still haven't got control over like where the focusing points are yet. It's very different. It has a different kind of focusing than my older cameras had. And my other cameras are like from 2013. Um, and this is just, uh, it's uh, got its own thing going on. You know, the focusing is really fast, even with these older lenses. So this is a D lens. This is the 180. Um, I used to use this a lot with film and I usually leave this 81B on here. First of all, it's got this big glass, so it covers the glass and it has a slight warming tint to it. And I never take this off. And with the digital, it doesn't matter anymore anyhow, because the digital compensates automatically, um, for that filter so with the film in the old days you would have more of a tint that might be there but it also used to cut out some of that bluey stuff um that you would get when the light was like in the shade or the shadows and then in the sun if there was brighter subjects you almost didn't even notice that it was on the camera you know so i just leave it on there and um i make sure it's nice and clean so i don't get any glare from it or anything like that um I know some people get a hang up about using filters, but when you have glass that's this big, um, you know, especially when you're out in the field and you start like going through different kind of things and it gets dirt on it and, you know, banged with this or that or the next thing. Um, but I really like this. It has the articulating screen. This screen pulls out so you can put it in different positions. You can have live view. You can have live view while you're shooting stills and it has uh focusing for the eyes, automatic. Um, I realize there's reviews online that are very technical, right? Um, so, and I've been doing photography since like ages. So this is, I mean, you know, I, I just, I'm not all into the techno geek thing. Uh, you know, I, I work with the camera, I set my settings and I go out and I get my shots. I'm not worried about every little techno geek thing that's in here. Um, I mean, this is definitely uh, has all the new things in it and the new features. The button layout is nice. It's very user friendly if you already use Nikon. My one beef is this, uh, the way they put the switch underneath the wheel. This is kind of a big switch. So if you have a big thumb like I do, it's always grabbing onto there where the other ones were more flat. So if I have some kind of a beef, that's it. Other than that, I mean, it's just kind of, the battery seems to have very good life. You can use the batteries from like the D7100s and stuff. It's the same battery, but supposedly it's not going to last as long as the one that they put in there. And I don't think you can charge it through the camera. So um, all that kind of good stuff. Um, and the best part is for me, is it takes all the older lenses, uh, like this one that I shot those pictures with, is it's old 300 millimeter Nikkor, which has been around for a really long time. And now, see, I don't have the filter on here, and it's got all that dirty specks on it, right? Eventually, I'll just brush it off, and then I'll clean it. I don't make a big deal about cleaning my lenses. Um, you know, the thing is, don't clean your lenses dry. <laughs> Because that's how you scratch them. You have to use something that's moist, like a very soft chamois or something, um, and just use it moist. A little bit of alcohol is fine or whatever, and just very lightly, uh, just it'll clean right up with chamois, no problem. In fact, that's what I carry in here. I'll show you. 
go to the auto parts store, buy a chamois, cut it up into pieces. And this is like phenomenal for cleaning uh, lenses. But again, the first thing you do is get a really, really, really soft brush, like a makeup brush, and just lightly get any dust or grit off the glass. And then you can use um, a little tiny bit of, it doesn't even matter, you know, like Windex, a little tiny bit or a little bit of alcohol and, um, and then just go around a circular pattern without pressing. Just go around and then shake this out and then do the other part and buff it and it'll be so clean, it'll take any of the oil off. None of these cleaning cloths that they have now take oil off. It doesn't happen. I have microfiber, I have everything. It does not take the oil off like chamois does. Chamois takes the oil off. I've been using it, when I used to shoot sports and I used to do some work for the newspaper that was years ago, it's all I ever used was chamois on those lenses. Um, so, I don't wanna make this video too long, but this is the other thing I use that's, you can't even find these anymore, but they're around. This is a dual element diopter made by Nikon. It's a close-up diopter, and it goes onto a 62 millimeter lens, and it's very excellent. It lets you have macro uh, close-up on a lens that's more normal, like this is my other lens that I use. This is the 85 1.8. I've had this for ever. <laughs> I think this is a 1990, 1989, I'm not even sure. And it works on this camera. This is the whole thing. This is the whole point of what I'm saying here. This goes on to this new camera and it works perfect. I don't have to do a thing. I have some newer lenses, but these are the ones I use in the field. I use the 180, the 85, and the 300. And sometimes I take my big 400, which is uh, a beast. You know, um, it's a big newspaper lens. The 3.5, 400 millimeter, you know. But this is still, this lens is still perfect. And it's been through everything, you know. But that close-up lens, you just take the hood off, put the close-up lens on the front. And if you want to put the hood back in, if you're getting a lot of, uh, you know, light coming from different directions, whoops, you can uh, do that, you know, and you can keep the hood on there. So, so that's it. This is what I'm talking about. I mean, you can go watch the techie reviews of this, but I'm just giving you real world experience with this camera. I've had it now, I don't know, a week. And I had it out in the field a few times uh, instead of my other camera that used to be in here. So um, everything else works perfect. It all fit together and, uh, and that's it. So, you know, it's a good machine. It's expensive. These are really expensive. You know, they're like $2,000. Um, so if you do a lot of photography and something like that is worth it to you, it's great. Um, if not, there's lower cameras that do a great job and, and they're, you know, they're not $2,000. So, okay, listen, have a great day. I appreciate anybody that subscribes or follows along and sends me messages. Um, you know, it's, it's great. So, um, and my other channel also, I know some of you follow both channels, my saxophone channel. I don't know if you play the saxophone, you know, right now there's not a lot of work. We're all sitting in our living rooms, uh, talking to ourselves because everything is closed down. So if you're a professional musician right now, it's, uh, it's not very good. Uh, but there's extra time for fishing and, and other stuff. All right. Have a great day and, uh, we'll talk again. Bye-bye.